On day 10, we'll be leaving Moab and driving to Canyonlands National Park, the Needles District, where we'll look around for most of the day. Then we will come back and go to the Needles Overlook before returning to Moab for the night. Canyonlands National Park is the greatest display on earth of sedimentary rock, mainly sandstone. As you can see, it covers millions of years. Canyonlands Needle Area and Maze is here. Monument Valley is at this level. Canyonlands Island in the Sky we'll see tomorrow is at this level. And then we move up the arches that we'll see the next day. And then on up to Dinosaur National Park where we'll be in a few weeks. And lastly, Bryce Canyon, which will be near the end of our trip. So as you can see, this area covers many millions of years of history. Canyonland was produced by a vast inland sea that turned into a desert, and then into a river delta that deposited these deposits. This park is the largest one in Utah, and one of the largest in the United States with over 350,000 acres. It is about 50 miles downstream from Arches National Park on the Colorado River. We'll be seeing that in a few days. It is divided into three sections by the Colorado River and the Green River. We will not be going into the maze area. It's the most remote and rugged terrain in the lower 48 states. And the only way in is by foot. Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, and her hole in the wall game get out here during much of their time. The rest of the park is two parks in one, so to speak. Islands in the Sky is a mesa that we'll be looking down into the other area from, kind of like standing on the rim of the Grand Canyon and looking down. And then Needles is at the bottom of that canyon. It'll be like standing in the Grand Canyon and looking up. And that's what we'll be looking at today. In the early morning, we wake up in Moab, Utah, and look at the mountains across from our hotel. And then it's time to get headed out. It's a long drive down to Needles from where we are now. Along the way, we're going to see some very spectacular scenery. Although we'll be looking at Arches National Park tomorrow and seeing hundreds of arches, there's arches everywhere in this area. We'll be talking later about how arches are formed. Soon we're turning off the regular highway and heading down the small path. It's an open range, so if you run over a cow, you pay, not the farmer paying you to repair your car. It's a long drive off the main highway down a smaller road to get to Needles. In fact, you have to drive down through a canyon to get there. And now we enter the canyon as we slowly wind down toward the bottom of the valley. Some of this canyon is very well watered with streams and so trees and other vegetation can grow there, especially cotton.
and then we come out of the canyon onto the floor of the main canyon in the Needles area. We've been driving in along the valley floor on the long road and finally have come to Canyonlands National Park, the Needles Division. It is a rather long route as we come in and we will be looking around the park here all most of the day. You can see most of it is not covered by roads. We'll be staying mainly on the paved roads or gravel roads to look at what we see today. First we'll be stopping at the Visitor Center to get an idea of what we'll be looking at. As you can see from this, it's a hugely rugged terrain that we're going to be driving around through with many mountains everywhere. We'll mainly be seeing two types of rock while we're here. White sandstone that is made of sediments along the seashore and red sandstone which is made up of sediments carried in and have a lot of iron that in oxidizes as it exposed to the air. Gravens or valleys in between the rock formations are not formed by erosion so much as by collapse of the rock layers below them. Then two things happen to these rock fins. Either they crack into various sections and erode away, leaving rock spires called needles, and thus the name of the area we're in. Or they can erode in weak sections of layers with the wind blowing sand through them and create arches. We'll see arches here also, but most of the arches will be in a few days at Arches National Park. Another formation we'll see are mushroom rocks. They are made when a hard rock cap erodes more slowly than softer layers below it. The hardness of a sedimentary rock depends on both its mineral content and the amount of cementing agent holding the sand grains together. As we look around the rock formations just outside the visitor center, we can see many of these different types of formations that we've been talking about. And now it's time for Deborah the Explorer and her cameraman to take off looking in this park. We'll be following this route at the beginning of our trip today. We'll be stopping along the way at various places to have looks and to take pictures. As 
Soon as we drive along, we come to the unusual formation called Wooden Shoe Arch. As you can see here, looks like a wooden shoe from Holland. Now we'll be going off the paved road onto a gravel road to Elephant Hill. It'll be kind of rough, so we're not going to have a lot of video, but you'll be able to see the pictures as we drive along. Then we come to the end of our road for the four-wheel drive road we're not going to be taking. We don't have a four-wheel drive. Next we'll be heading out to Big Springs Canyon Overlook to get a look down into the river. On the way we'll stop and go to Pothole Point Trail. We'll walk it across the slick rock and see wonderful views but also see the potholes which we'll talk about in a minute. This trail is about a half a mile long, and I'll go exploring while Deborah rests in the car.
As you can see, there are many mushroom rock deposits here, and some have even collapsed and fallen over. This rock looks almost like a marble the way it's been weathered, and here's some pointing the way. From this point, you can get a very good look over the needles in the distance and see how they are formed. Besides the beautiful views, I have come to look at the potholes, these sandy depressions that you see here. They contain life when it rains here. Even though it only rains seven to nine inches a year here, they come alive within seconds. As you can see here, water will remain for quite some time. Eggs and larvae can lay dormant for over 50 years until the rain comes. The biggest threat to these potholes are humans, actually. Their body oil, soaps, and sunscreens destroy all life in a pothole, and since each ecosystem is unique, you destroy an entire ecosystem. As you can see here, there are snails in this water. And there are various algae species here too, as you can see floating here. And then there are tadpole shrimp here you can see this one moving in the water. The tadpole shrimp date back to over 200 million years and they lay their eggs in the sediment to bury them as you can see this one here doing. In potholes they have found 15 species of beetles, two species of mosquito larvae, three forms of water bugs, fairy shrimp, tadpoles, water fleas, mayflies, gnats, tadpoles of various kinds from various frogs and toads. They're actually a very unique and diverse habitat. As you can see, this pothole is very deep. In fact, it could last for several months after the rain quits. Now it's time to talk about another ecosystem, the soil itself. It looks so dead, but you don't walk on this soil because it is living, and to step on it will destroy what it took over a thousand years to produce. It's held together with cyanobacteria and is extremely fragile. The soil can lay dormant for decades if it needs to, and it looks so dead, but actually it took over a thousand years to produce this soil right here, and you can destroy it with one step. Let's watch this ranger's demonstration of the living soil. So you can see that they're sort of a dark brown and we'll wet them, and within literally seconds, they're turning green already. This place is absolutely alive. Every surface is alive. This is not time-lapse photography. This is moss in rapid response mode. Tiny organisms, dormant sometimes for decades, lay in wait for just a few drops to revive them. What's happening here is hidden life. There's life everywhere you look. And now it's time for us to head back out. We'll be taking the alternate route when we get to the Y before leaving the park. We'll be stopping obviously along the way to take pictures and to look. And before we get started, here's a raven looking for a handout maybe.
And now it's time to head back up the valley and out of the park. We'll then wind around on the highway and turn off and head to Needles Overlook. Today we've been looking in this area and now we've moved to the Needles Overlook. Tomorrow we'll be at Islands of the Sky, but right now we're on the end of a mesa looking down into Needles. And those roads below are uranium mines that they have dug in this area in the past, and so these were the roads for digging those mines. Let's just sit back and look at some of the views of the valley that we were in today. In this area, there are a lot of lichens and moss growing on the rocks, as you can see, and they give a beautiful color to the rocks. Along the path, a Hopi chipmunk pops up. And then we also see a whiptail lizard, which soon scurries off to hide. Various plants are also in flower right now. In the distance, we can see the Abajo Mountains. They look almost like they have a frosting on them. And you can see up on this mesa, it's a sagebrush habitat. And now it's time to head back to Moab, where we'll be spending the night. On the way back, we'll pass Hole in the Rock. It has a petting zoo and other things and a huge lizard crawling up the rock. This is now a tourist trap and souvenir shop, but at one time it was owned by a family who actually lived inside the rock and loved Jesus. Transformers 4 was filmed here in part, and now it's time to head on back to Moab.
And then this brings us to the end of day 10.